Hey guys, I'm Jesus. And I'm Mark. And this, this is Wildcat, Wildcat TV. TV. And now time for the Pledge of Allegiance and the moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Students, next week we have our end of course exams for biology, U.S. history, and algebra one. Biology is Monday, May 7th. U.S. history is Tuesday, May 8th. And algebra one is Wednesday, May 9th. Rosters will be posted to the library and AP office windows. Please look for your name and testing room. 11th and 12th graders who are not scheduled to test should report to school at 11.45 a.m. on Monday through Wednesday only. Those who have a lunch can report directly to your fourth period class. If you have any questions, please see your AP or counselor. Wait, Jose, you gotta wait. You, we gotta ask him what they learned this week, please. You, you, no, please, you can go home later. Just come on, let's, let's go ask him. Come on, here we go, here we go. It won't take long, I promise. Oh my God. That wasn't in the script. <laughs> what did you learn this week? Top 10 missed star questions. Yes. I learned about different types of soils. Nice. Um, I learned how to cut a watermelon. Fruits. What did you learn this week? 
I learned that it's harder to make a resume than it actually seems because when they were listing what achievements have you made, yeah, I only achieved one and it was fourth grade, best artist. Art. Well, I learned how to conjugate in Spanish class. Spanish. Uh, well, I wasn't here most of the week, but last week I learned um, better ways to write an argument essay, a synthesis essay, and a rhetorical analysis essay, all thanks to my lovely teacher, Miss Sims. Miss Sims. <laughs> I learned that I've never been more ready for summer until now. And you? Um, I learned how to study five minutes for a test and still make a hundred. Yes. What did you guys learn this week? In health class, we learned rice. Rest. Ice. Compression. Elevation. They learned. What did you learn this week? Um, I learned that school doesn't really teach you anything and I don't need it. Oh my god. I don't need that. I, I'm just kidding. You please stay in school, pe people. Yes. I'm not going to... I need to go to college classes. That's what I learned. Yes. That, that was a good save. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Mallory, I'm a senior, whoop whoop, and this is my first time doing the Broadway show and I'm super excited. But the hardest part was dancing because I am not a natural dancer, so yeah. My name is Alyssa Rice, I'm a senior, and my favorite thing about choreographing the Broadway show was the fact that I got to learn how to be a teacher. It was pretty fun and I was told that I should probably become one. Hi, I'm Morgan White. My favorite song that we're doing for Broadway is Transylvania Mania. It's our most modern, but it's our most fun. I love it. Hi, my name is Tyra Williams, and I'm a senior in show choir and in encore. And one of my favorite things about this production is that seniors get to do senior solos, and encore gets to perform as well as show choir. The AHS Show Choir is presenting their annual Broadway show on Friday, May 4th. The show will begin at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. Admission is $5 per person. Refreshments will be provided. Come enjoy a night of classic show tunes and amazing solos. Now it's time for Kroll's Corner. Yay. Hey, good Friday morning, Angleton High School home champions. What a beautiful day to be a Wildcat. Whew, Friday, we made it. Crazy week. It's a busy week. So last night, our Lady Cats and the boys baseball had their first playoff game. They both play again tonight. Lady Cats in Brenham. The Wildcats here at home. Okay, so go support someone somewhere. We're going to send out some positive vibes right now to our, to our own personal, fun, smart Wildcat, Abby Rowland, who is going to... Austin right now and she's going to represent Angleton High School at the UIL academic meet where she's going to participate in Lit Crit. Good luck Abby. Do an amazing awesome job. I know you will. Hey, just to remind you that your attendance is your issue. That's something that you need to make sure you're taking care of. All right. Uh, you have the ability to check your attendance each and every day. If there's an issue come try to fix that as soon as you find the issue. Don't wait four or five days. Exemption stuff is on the line for you okay so we're not going to fix something four or five days later you find a mistake come find us you know what guys mistakes are easy to be made we have about two thousand kids on campus we have a lot of subs things happen there are a lot of moving parts so it's not like we're intentionally trying to make mistakes and hold you back from exemptions mistakes happen so when a mistake happens be kind and gracious when you're pointing that mistake out to someone and I know that we'll do our best to be kind and gracious to you when you make a mistake hey so this is for all my seniors out there it's getting close to graduation uh, some of you are gonna graduate with no issue at all some of you are gonna wait to the last minute to kinda skate by and graduate and there are a few of you who we need some prayer lots and lots of that prayer meditation whatever it is you wanna say but you are in danger for those of you who are going to graduate, and for those of you who are going to skate by and make it to graduation on that Friday in May, here are a couple of things you need to know. One, we're going to search you. That's going to happen before graduation. Don't decorate your hat. 
because we're not going to let you wear your hat that's decorated. I know that uh, some people think that it's their right to decorate their hat. It's not. This graduation ceremony is for the community to celebrate your success, all right? More often than not, I'll tell you like my mom told me, the graduation ceremony was for her and all her hard work. She wanted to see her hard work walk across the stage. There are a lot of folks that have put a lot of time and energy and effort into you and they want to see you walk across the field and get your diploma. No decorating of the hats. If you bring your hat decorated, we will give you another hat, all right? So don't decorate it, don't do that. Don't be that person. Next week we have our EOC testing. <clears throat> Pardon me. We have our EOC testing. Starts Monday. All right. So there are a couple of things you need to know about that. Juniors and seniors, you guys have waivers. You can come at 11:15, or if you have a lunch, you can go straight to your fourth period class when you're supposed to get there. If you're going to study for your AP exams, juniors and seniors, if you're going to study for your AP exams and you come in the morning to morning tutorials, then we can flip that. Uh, absence for you in the afternoon and we'll take the attendance that goes along with that. See Mr. Miller, he's taking care of those things for you. No deliveries for lunch, okay? Uh, we're not going to have the waiter coming up here three or four times in a lunch period to bring someone who's testing a lunch. We're just not. So make sure you either bring your lunch with you ahead of time or that you're prepared to eat a lunch here from our cafeteria. And then just know that we expect you to do your very, very best. This is an opportunity for you to show the world how smart you are. And you know, there's some of you like, these tests are stupid. I don't want to do these tests. Well, you know what? If you don't pass these tests, you don't graduate. And I'd rather just jump through the hoop about taking the test than not worry about graduating later. All right? The choice is ultimately up to you, but be smart about this. For those of you who don't like school, you do a lot of stuff to make you stay in school longer instead of just pushing through and getting it done. All right, so words of wisdom. Watch this video. One of my close friends, a guy called Chris, um, who I'd grown up with, had very suddenly and, and very tragically passed away overnight. And that moment made me ponder a lot of questions immediately. Why am I here? What am I doing? Whatever it is I am doing, am I doing it well? But the one thing that stuck in my head was simply this notion. If Chris knew that he only had 24 years on earth, would he have lived the same way if given another chance? Would he have changed anything? Was he happy? And I never got to ask that question to him. But the more I thought about it, he lived on the beaches. He loved his family, he loved his mates. Yeah, he loved being a big kid. Rightly or wrongly, by anyone else's code, Chris was living a life that reflected his values. He wouldn't have changed a thing. I then asked myself that same question at 24 in Canada. Looking back at my life, could I honestly say that I was living a life that I was happy with? Or would I change everything? And instantly, with consideration, I realised that I would change everything. And I decided then and there to drop everything in my life to pursue my list. You're gonna judge me and that's fine, but I flew straight to Las Vegas because I've always wanted to marry a stranger there. Now, it's, it's legal, it's legal, so how, how can that be wrong? This is the first time that I'd identified a goal for myself, by myself, for me. And I went through the process of getting there and I achieved it. And immediately I felt empowered, I felt in control of my life. The question that I was asking myself, what's on your list, started to get heard and it resonated with people around the world. And suddenly, not through asking, people would send me their lists. Thank you for doing what you're doing, you've inspired me to consider my dreams. Thank you for doing what you're doing, these are the things that I've now done. And my life changed when I met this guy here called Mark. He saw me on TV, emailed me and said, I want to do a half marathon. But when I got to know Mark, we are very different. He's a quadriplegic. At the age of 32, completely able-bodied, went to Greece backpacking, got bitten by a tick, contracted Lyme's disease. Quadriplegic, can't talk, can't move. And I looked at him and I said, okay, how? And he simply said, push me which is funny, but it's also quite deep. I'd never wanted to run that distance in my life. I think it's disgusting. <laughs> but at that moment, it was the most important thing to me. And so I signed us up for the Melbourne Half Marathon and this happened a few weeks later. Helping someone was the greatest thing I've ever done. And I haven't stopped since. In fact, I'm approached by people all around the world now who need help with various things and I can't stop. This is about finding your passion and through that, finding purpose. This is about growing in every day, in every way. And I think it's about connection with each other, of course, but I think firstly with yourself. And this is my story. 
why did it take a loss in my life for me to consider something good? And why do we hear that story all the time? Someone's diagnosed with an illness, let's call it cancer. Someone's involved in a car crash. And if they're lucky enough to survive, they're the ones that jump out of bed and climb a mountain or write a book or propose to a loved one or start a company or learn how to play ukulele. Why should it take a dark moment to consider a light moment? And I don't think it should. And when you have that, uh, that goal, that meaningful goal, it could be something personal, it could be something professional, it could be within the community. It could be something, we're all different. It's a relative concept, it's beautiful, we're all so different. It could be something that scares you or challenges you, it could be financial, experiential, it doesn't matter, it could be all of these things. The only thing of importance is that you know what it is for you. It's just a choice to pursue it. Life is about choices. You choose to be here, you choose not to be here. Because at the end of the day, we are entirely accountable for what we do. We're not bystanders, we're in the driving seat. And if this is right, the question therefore becomes, what's on your list? All right, guys, here it is. It's the weekend. You know what's coming up. Not everybody's doing it. It's okay to say no. And don't let what sounds good for 15 minutes ruin the next 15 years. Take this opportunity to make yourselves and Angleton High School better because we're all Wildcats. Have a great weekend. That's all for this week. You all have a safe weekend. Bye. Bye.